In section 13.2, we are looking at graphs and level curves of multivariable functions. Now to get us started, I want to talk about functions with two variables. And we'll establish these concepts in two variables and then naturally extend them into n independent variables. So in general, functions with two variables can either be written in explicit notation or implicit notation. So a function defined explicitly will look like z is equal to f of x, y, whereas an implicitly defined function will have the form f of x, y, z is equal to zero. So now here's our formal definition for a function of two variables. So a function z equals f of x, y assigns each ordered pair in a set d in R2 to a unique real number z in a subset of the reals. So we say here that the set d is the domain of our function. So this set d in R2, the set of all those ordered pairs, is the domain of our function with two variables. So the domain of f. Now the range of our function is the set of all real numbers z that are assumed as the points x, y vary over the domain. So we say that the range of our function, so the range of our function f is the set of all reals z that are assumed as the points x, y vary over the domain. So again, the range of our function f is the set of all real numbers z that are assumed as these ordered pairs in R2 vary over the domain. So this definition reminds us of what we already know from two dimensions. And what's nice here is that this definition and the implicit and explicit notation naturally extends into higher dimensional space. So let's go ahead now and look at functions of n independent variables. So functions of more than two variables. And again, the characteristics of functions with two variables that we just looked at are going to naturally extend to three or more variables. So to help us see this natural extension, let's take a minute and think about the progression of functions with several variables. So the first column is representing the number of independent variables in your function. So when we first began our mathematical journey, our calculus journey, we had functions with one independent variable. The explicit notation of this function is simply y equals f of x. Now, if we wanted to define this same function implicitly or in its equation form, we would rewrite the function as capital F of x, y equals zero. And now we, of course, know that a function y equals F of x lives in R2. So the dimension that the graph resides in or lives in is two dimensions, our x, y plane. Now, on the previous slide, we looked at functions with two independent variables. So when a function has two independent variables, the explicit notation becomes z is equal to f of x, y. And we saw that implicitly, or in the equation form, we would rewrite this function as capital F of x, y, z is equal to zero. And we know that a graph of a function with two independent variables lives in R3. Now what about if we add another independent variable? What about if we have three independent variables? How would we define this function explicitly?
we would say that this is some function w is equal to f of x, y, z. So here our independent variables are x, y, and z. Now if we wanted to rewrite this function in its equation form or its implicit notation, we would simply rewrite it in the equation form capital F of x, y, z, w equals zero. And then so a function with three independent variables is going to live in or will reside in R4. So you're starting to see that natural progression or that systematic procedure for defining functions with more and more independent variables. So now we can go ahead and think, well, how is this going to change if we have n independent variables? So when you have n independent variables, we're going to go back to redefining the function in explicit notation as some y is equal to f of x sub 1, then we'll have x sub 2, and this continues all the way until we get to that x sub nth term. Now, how would we define this implicitly? Well, take a minute and look back at when we had three independent variables. Notice how in the explicit notation you can see those three. One, two, three, equate, or three variables. And then when you have your implicit notation, we have one, two, three, four. Because right? you're rewriting it in its equation form. So when we rewrite this explicit notation implicitly, we're going to say that this is some function, capital F, of x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way. Then we have that x sub nth term, and we need one more term, so that's x sub n plus 1. And so keeping this implicit notation in mind, we can say that this the graph of a function with n independent variables will reside in Rn plus 1. So there's our natural progression of functions with several variables. And so let's now go ahead and think about the formal definition for a function with n independent variables. And this is going to look familiar. We say that a function with n independent variables defined as y is equal to f of x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way to x sub n, assigns a unique real number y to each point, x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way to x sub n, in a set d that lives in Rn. Now we say that this, this set d is the domain of our function. So the set D in Rn is the domain of this function. The same as the definitions that we saw for two independent variables and one independent variable still remains consistent in Rn. So this is the domain of our function f. Now we say that the range is the set of all real numbers y that are assumed as these points vary over the domain. So the definition for the range is still the same. We say that the range of our function f is still the set of all real numbers y So the set of all real numbers y that are assumed as the points. So here our points have n components. We have x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way to x sub n. So the set of all real numbers y that are assumed as these points vary over the domain. So our definition for domain and range remains consistent as the number of independent variables in a function increases. So let's go ahead now and explore this in more detail with some examples.